Alright guys, today we have an unboxing of the um, new Death Watch Overkill board game, essentially, uh, from Games Workshop. So the order Xenos getting some loving, because it's been a while. So let's have a look. So obviously you got a cool young Cassius, before he becomes old man Cassius. Um, him and his little entourage fighting the Gene Stealer Colts. So some really cool artwork there. And here we go, get into this piece of the game proper. So obviously you get your rule book and everything as normal. Again, some awesome art. I'm facing that's the Blood Raven. Blood Raven representing one of my favourite chapters in 40k. So it's good to have those in. Represented in as, as a model. You got your boards. Let's crack these open and have a look. Very reminiscent of Space Hulk. That sort of feel, and that sort of look. So they seem like one big piece rather than splitting into multiple little pieces. And they're very much double sided. I'm guessing that's like a bridge or something. Or it might be like a cavern. That's an interesting one. Huh. Uh, yeah, it pretty much repeats itself essentially. Going down all the different tiles. Yeah, that's cool, like teleport style area. So, for those of you that may not know about the Death Watch, or may have only just heard of them, Death Watch are the chamber militant of the Order Xenos. So, what that means is the Order Xenos is the, the alien hunters, uh, very much like you have the demon hunters and the, the witch hunters. Uh, and what they do, they are a Space Marine chapter which is made up of uh, people uh, seconded from other space marine chapters. So uh, as you as you know in the game, like you have like a space wolf, a dark angel, a blood angel, you know, all those sort of stereotypical ones as well. Uh, but what it is is these marines come together, and they're generally chosen from the chapter for being um, very good at their job. If you know what I mean. Being like the space marines that are very good at killing the xenos, and their job is purely to deal with uh, the xenos threats. Um, and to, to be basically the uh, Inquis Inquisition's chapter, essentially. Um, you also have, which is kind of cool, which uh, may lead into expansions or something, I'm not quite sure, uh, the Black Shields, which are Marines from um, anywhere. They could be traitors that turn loyalists, they could be uh, just Marines that have their chapters turn traitor, but they remain loyal, or. Um, Marines that no longer agree with their chapter's ethics and have joined the Death Watch. So it's kind of cool. So you can, you know, if you fancy uh, not playing Ultramarines as Ultramarines, you could do something like that. Quite cool. Or, you know, Blade Angels as Blade Angels. So, before I continue rambling on, let's go through some of the other bits. So you get your cards. I think it splits into two decks. Or well, there's two decks in here. So this one seems to be the Gene Stealer Cult deck. Uh, seems very reminiscent of the Officio Assassinorum game, where the cards seem to tell you what to do, or have uh, rules to do with certain units. Seems cool. Obviously you get your bag of bases. You gotta have that biker base, because the white scar bought a bike. Trust the white scars. Some cool little dice. Some more bases. Alright, let's have a look. So these seem to be the character cards for basically your stats and how things work. So you've got Jetic Subari of the White Scars, you know, Salamander, I'm not going to try and butcher his name, Cassius before he gets his uh, new metal face, uh, Bale, a Space Wolf, a Dark Angel. Raven Guard, Blood Angel, uh, Iron Hand, and Imperial Fist, 
the, the best legion. Uh, Blood Raven, and you get different types of GC like leaders. So basically, you get scrubs and you'll get leaders, and the leaders are the ones that you actually really care about. The rest of them aren't that great. Let's put it up. So let's have a look at the models, which is what you're all here, here for. So, I'm going to have a look first, let's move that way for a sec, at the GC the Colists. So, you get a mix of different stages of GC the Cult. Um, members, different hybrids. Uh, I think it's stage one through four, and you get a Magos, a Primus, and then the Patriarch Gene Stealer, and you get two uh, pure strain Gene Stealers, which are basically just Gene Stealers. So you can see here, like, there's a, there's a standard Gene Stealer. Uh, you get, so you've got people that are basically like half and halves, essentially, um, and then you've got people that are closer to the Gene Stealers, like these guys. They've got multiple arms and GCS star heads and not very nice people, let's put it that way. You get this crazy mining laser. I want to see what that is. Should be good. So these parts are really good. So very um as a lot of people point out, very good for uh, Necromunda, if you're gonna do like a Gene Steel cult in that. Or just general like um cultists essentially. If you wanted to make a crazy like cultist combined with um Tyranids sort of army. Like maybe like these guys are the guys leading the Tyranids in. That could be quite cool. So, yeah. Here's another look. Um, so, you got, like, yeah, these are like the more forever along. These guys are the generic, just like inducted essentially. You get another sprue of that. So, you get twice as many of those guys. So, these guys are just the basic bods. Yeah. The ones the uh, Space Marines will call quite quickly. But if there's enough of them, they'll probably drag one or two of them down. That's the uh, Colts, out of the way. So here we have the uh, Patriarch, which is a really crazy cool looking model. It's got all the spines in the world. Um, it's standing on some pipe by those things. And you got the uh, Primus, which I believe is this guy. Uh, a bit like a warrior guy by those things. Commands the minions around, gets them to do his job. You know, looks after the, uh, the Gene Steers and this guy, the Magos, who's a bit like a priest, essentially, from what I can tell. That, like, um, gets the Gene Steers cult going, makes sure it remains cohesive, and makes sure it praises the hive mind, essentially. So, you know, you've got all this Xenos filth, so you can send someone to purge it. So you send the Death Watch. So here we go. In Death Watch Marines. So you got the cool biker, the uh, white scar. I don't know why he bought a bike to what well, looks like the middle of a ship or some underground like hive. It's beyond me. Uh, you got your Raven Guard and your Space Wolf here. So each of them have the Death Watch shoulder pad, which you know makes sense. Because um, even when they return to the chapters, they still have the Death Watch shoulder pad and the Death Watch colours. Uh, to represent the fact that they were in the Death Watch. Uh, you also have the Ultramarine down here. Um, you have the Blood Angel. You have the Imperial Fist and these crazy uh, like bolt gun cannon weapon, which looks rid ridiculously cool. Uh, and then over here you've got your Iron Hand with his bionics. Uh, so these would make really good uh, character models in the armies or just a unit by themselves. Uh, there are rules in the next White Dwarf for the Death Watch Marines themselves and for the GC they caught to use in 40k. Uh, so this could be quite cool as maybe just a little army in itself, like play a fire and job point game, bring out the Death Watch. You know what I mean? Like, you mix it against other armies like Eldar or Tau, see how the Death Watch can do as a kill team against them. So that's these guys. These guys are your generic sort of uh, squad together. So these guys basically form the base of the squad um, with your outriding guys essentially being your biker and your two salt marines. And then on this sprue we have the like, character guys essentially. We've got Cassius who if you uh, know the space marines already is a um, half bionic tyrannic war veteran in uh, normal 40k. But in this one, this is before then. So this is when he's young Cassius. Or at least, not old Cassius. 
So he might still be like a couple hundred odd years old at this point. Um, and he's not like the Bionics yet, and he's not fought the Tyranids in the Tyranic War, yet, in the Tyranic War yet. Uh, you also have the uh, Salamander Terminator. He's put his flamer because he's a salamander. He also seems to have a uh, melter gun on his fist. So he's, he's definitely come packing. He's come to do his job. Uh, you have the uh, Dark Angel um, with his robes, his plasma pistol because Dark Angels. And then you have the Blood Raven. I think this is the first time they've ever produced a Blood Raven model that is specifically a Blood Raven. Um, there's ones that have been very similar but haven't ever been mentioned as actual Blood Ravens. Uh, so it's nice to see them represented. And then, last but not least, you get very reminiscent of a certain um, miniatures football game. Uh, you get a rangefinder specific to the game. So you have, I'm assuming like, oh, so assault, combat would be a short range fire and the maximum would probably be like your long range fire. There'd be reductions and the usual uh, game mechanics you come to expect. But that is the Death Watch. So, it's a very interesting game. I have to give it a few games. A few goes. But yeah, awesome miniatures, awesome concept again. Death Watch is amazing. It's been like one of the most amazing bits of 40k lore for a long time. Uh, if you if you get a chance, even if you're not into RPGs, if you read the RPG books produced by Fantasy Flight Games on Death Watch, they're very good for background. And they're also um, these models will make amazing models to use in those campaigns. So that is the Death Watch Overkill uh, unboxing.